Interstate 55 south of Macomb, Mississippi, and now we're on Mississippi 568 heading west. We're a few miles east of the small town of Gillsburg, Mississippi. We're trying to locate or get as close as we can to the 1977 plane crash of Southern rock band Leonard Skinner. Now when you see the sign on the left that says Hung Yin Farms, take the next road to the left easily. And in 1964, students from the Robert E. Lee High School in Jacksonville, Florida, formed a teenage band. Their names were Bobby Burns, Gary Rossington, Ronnie Van Zant, along with Alan Collins and Larry Junstrom. They called their band My Backyard. In the next few years, they changed their names several times. That was so that if they were barred from playing in one club, they could change their name and still play there. Now in 1970, the band was calling themselves the 1%. While playing at a local club in Jacksonville called the Forest Inn, Ronnie Van Zant, the lead singer of the group, walks up to the microphone and says, hey, we're Leonard Skinner and we have come to play for you. The crowd loved it because most of them were familiar. We had already had some run-ins with gym teacher Leonard Skinner, a strict disciplinarian. It had been a run-in joke with the band for years, ever since Coach Skinner had sent Bobby Burns and Gary Rossington to the principal's office for wearing long hair. The name stuck and the band Leonard Skinner was born. In 1973, Leonard Skinner's their debut album went gold. That same year, the band opened for the band The Who. They were on their way. By 1977, Leonard Skinner was one of the leading bands in the country. With such hits as Free Bird, Give Me Three Steps, Sweet Home Alabama, and Give Me Back My Bullets. On October the 20th, 1977, Leonard Skinner was in the middle of their most successful tour. And for that tour, they had leased this two-engine, twin-prop Convair CV300 commercial airline that had been converted for private use. Tail number N. 55VM. This same plane earlier in the year had been looked at by the band Aerosmith. They turned it down on the grounds that the plane was unsafe and that the pilots had been seen drinking during pre-flight. The flight from Miami to Greenville, South Carolina, members of the Skinner Band spotted intermittent fire coming from one of the engines. Naturally, the band members became alarmed, and when they reached Greenville, they had expected the problem to be took care of. Some say the company that had leased the plane to Skinner wanted their own mechanics to fix the engine, and that they would send a mechanic to meet the team in Baton Rouge, their next stop. Little did the band Leonard Skinner know that their performance at the Greenville Memorial Auditorium would be their last performance for over 10 years. When the band members learned that the plane would not be repaired until they reached Baton Rouge, several were reluctant to board. Rumors said that Cassie Gaines threatened to ride with an equipment truck. Others talked of flying commercial. Only the persuasion and encouragement of the band leader, Ronnie Van Zant, did they decide to board the CV-300. The Convair N55VM left the Greenville Airport 
for the 670 mile trip to Baton Rouge with 26 people aboard, seven band members, two pilots, and 20 road crew and backup singers. They left sometime around 5 p.m. It was the 20th of October, 1977. During mid-flight, the group spotted flames coming from one of the engines, the same engine that had flamed on their way from Miami to Greenville. According to drummer Artemis Powell, it was discussed whether to stop in Macomb, Mississippi and let the engine cool and check fuel. The engine had been running in rich fuel in order to keep it running, which meant that it was using and losing more fuel than usual. The fuel gauge was not working, and it had to be checked with a stick, which the pilots failed to do before leaving Greenville. Unknown to them, they were losing more fuel than they had realized. They were only 60 miles or so from Baton Rouge and only a 10 minute flying time. The fatal decision was made to continue the flight. All at once, both engines began to shut down. They were out of fuel. The emergency call went out, were out of fuel and trying to return to Macomb. They were all told were going to crash. The last minutes were silent. No engine noise. The pilots were trying to make it to an open field. They fell several hundred yards short. Now this ahead of us is the Johnny Moat farm. Now it's the Hung Yin chicken farm. Now right through there on the right, beyond the chicken houses, is where the CV-300 went down back in those far woods. Now this shows where the crash site is located. It was only a few hundred yards through the swamp to this open field. I'm standing here on Easley Road. The pilot hoping to make it to the open field, the landing gear was down and although the pasture was not level, it would have most likely have saved lives. This shows the pasture that they were trying to make it to. I'm still on Easley Road, looking towards the crash site in the far corner of the woods and swamp. Number N55V fell short of the open field hitting tall timber. With the landing gear down, it pulled the plane sharply into the ground, and the aircraft split into three different pieces clipping trees and breaking apart. Fortunately, the plane did not catch fire, causing more lives to be lost. The conveyor was out of fuel. It was believed that the pilot tried to switch to the reserve tanks and mistakenly dumped the fuel. But according to the National Transportation Safety Board, all dumped fuel valves were in the closed position. They basically said that it is likely there was a malfunction of the engine causing both to run out of fuel and pilots were negligent not checking fuel levels before they left Greenville. Now this is a picture of the seven band members in 1977. All were on board the N55VM when it crashed. Standing is Alan Collins, guitarist. Steve Gaines, guitarist and vocalist. Gary Rossington, guitarist. Artemis Powell, drummer. And seated is Billy Powell, keyboardist and pianist. Ronnie Van Zant, leader and lead vocalist. And Leon Wilson, bass. There were six fatalities. Ronnie Van Zant, lead singer, songwriter, and Leonard Skinner, founder. He was 29 years old. Steve Gaines, guitarist and vocalist. He was 28. Cassie Gaines, vocalist and sister of Steve. She was 29. Dean Kilpatrick, 
Assistant Road Manager, age 28. Pilot Walter W. McCary, age 34, and co-pilot William J. Gray, Jr., age 32. The surviving band members was Alan Collins, two cracked vertebrae in the neck, arm almost amputated. Gary Rossington, both arms broke, left leg and pelvis broke, puncture wounds in the stomach and liver. Leon Wilson, bad cut on arm, punctured lungs, lost most of his teeth. Billy Powell, broke nose to the side of his face, cuts and lacerations. Artemis Powell, several broke ribs, contusions. L Leslie Hawkins, backup vocalist, concussion. Broken neck, several facial lacerations. Now there were three backup vocalists, Cassie Gaines, Leslie Hawkins, and Jojo Billingsley, who was not on the plane cause she was homesick. There were 14 others on the flight. Crew members, lighting technicians, and sound engineers. All were hurt, some seriously. Artemis Powell, Mark Frank, and Kenneth Peden crawled from the wreckage and made it through the swamps trying to find help. They finally located a local farmer by the name of Johnny Moat. In 2006, Gary Rossington, Billy Powell, and Artemis Powell, Ed King, and Bob Burns were all inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Through the years, the band Leonard Skinner has changed over 20 times. The only original band member still with Leonard Skinner is Gary Rossington.